Another type of ball bearing is an angular contact ball bearing. An angular contact ball bearing has a high shoulder on one side of the inner ring and a high shoulder on the opposite side of the outer ring. This design allows the bearing to handle both axial loads and radial loads. Angular contact bearings are often used in pairs so that they can support axial load in either direction. The surfaces that contact each other are specially machined to match. If one of the pair fails, both bearings must be replaced. This illustration shows the main parts of a type of ball bearing called a ball thrust bearing. In a ball thrust bearing, the inner and outer rings are parallel to each other instead of one inside the other. This placement of the rings allows the bearing to support axial load, but only a small amount of radial load. The other basic category of rolling contact bearings is roller bearings. Roller bearings can carry more load than ball bearings because rollers are larger than balls and they spread the load over a greater area. Let's look at some common types of roller bearings. Cylindrical roller bearings have rollers that are shaped like cylinders. These bearings are designed primarily to support heavy radial loads. Needle roller bearings are similar to cylindrical bearings, but the rollers are much thinner. Needle roller bearings can support a great deal of radial load because many of the thin rollers can be put into a bearing. Needle roller bearings are often mounted without an inner ring or a retainer. Instead, the rollers ride directly on the surface of the shaft. Because these bearings can be mounted without an inner ring, they are often mounted on shafts where space is limited. Another type of roller bearing is a tapered roller bearing. In tapered roller bearings, the rollers are smaller at one end than at the other. The rings are tapered to match the rollers. Tapered roller bearings can support both radial loads and axial loads. Barrel or spherical roller bearings are self-aligning bearings. The outer ring is shaped like part of a sphere, which allows the bearing to align itself. Barrel roller bearings are designed to handle primarily radial loads, but they can also handle some axial loads. This illustration represents the construction of a roller thrust bearing. In a roller thrust bearing, the rings are parallel to each other instead of one inside the other. Roller thrust bearings are used to support heavy axial loads, but only a small amount of radial load. Bearings are precision parts, and they must be installed as precisely as possible. How the bearing fits onto a shaft and the kind of mounting that is used are both important to the proper functioning of a bearing. The term fit refers to the tightness or looseness with which a bearing is installed onto a shaft. There are two kinds of fit, push fit and press fit. A push fit is a fairly loose fit. Usually, a ring that has a push fit can be pushed into place by hand. A press fit is much tighter. More effort is needed to press the ring into place. A press fit is also called an interference fit or a shrink fit. Generally, rolling contact bearings have a press fit on the ring that rotates and a push fit on the ring that doesn't rotate. In most bearings, the inner ring is the ring that rotates. So let's take a look at some methods for mounting bearings whose inner ring rotates. One inner ring mounting method that's commonly used is lock washer lock nut mounting. In this method, a shoulder on the shaft is used to prevent the bearing from sliding in one direction. The shoulder is the place on the shaft where the shaft size changes so that a bearing can be placed against it. The bearing is installed with a press fit against the shoulder. A lock washer and a lock nut are used on the other side of the bearing to prevent the bearing from sliding in the opposite direction. The lock washer has a tab that fits into a slot in the shaft and prevents the lock washer from slipping around the shaft. Other tabs on the lock washer can be bent to fit into slots in the lock nut to prevent the nut from loosening. 